Hey, pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Center News. I'm Joe Bork, and this is going to be a preview to our Philadelphia Flyers against the Carolina Hurricanes. First and foremost, please can you subscribe down below or up above on the Easy Dudes widget to keep us growing to 215 by the end of March. The Flyers' two game winning streak that they beat Chicago, led by a great game by Cam Agasson and some key saves by Morton Jones, and Vegas, all because of Carter Hart's absolutely stellar play. Fell to the Florida Panthers after a very lousy first period. Actually, a pretty good second period to battle back. And then faltered extremely again in the third against a top-tier cup contender that averages over four goals a game and is by far one of the best cup contending teams in the NHL. So now coming into this game, it ain't getting any easier because the Florida Panthers, or, or, or because going from the Florida Panthers to the Carolina Hurricanes, is going from one top-tier cup contender to another top-tier cup contender when it comes to our Philadelphia Flyers and when it comes to the Carolina Hurricanes, who um, also average top 10 in goals in the league, but also are the top defense in the league, which the Panthers are a damn good defense, but on top of being a great scoring team, the Carolina Hurricanes have the top defense in the league, and not just defensemen, from their forward court back, and um, somebody that it seems like they're agreeing to an eight-year deal on, it can't be um, announced until the lock, or not the lock, until the, um, had baseball on my mind, until the deadline, because it's an eight-year deal, and because of all the rules in place, once you give somebody an offer sheet and what have you, but it seems like Cock and the Emmy's going to be there for eight more years. Jordan Stahl's very good on both ends. Jesper Fass is a smart player on both ends. Marty Nakis is great on both ends, same with Trocek. And then even Sebastian Ajo is very good on both ends. And Sveshnikov, even though he's a great offensive player, does have smarts to be able to cut off lanes and do things in his own end as well. So this team is very well put together. The Carolina Hurricanes are going to be similar to the Panthers, one of the toughest opponents the Flyers have faced. But at the same time, unlike against the Panthers, our Flyers have a recent game that they actually played the Carolina Hurricanes really well, which is when they lost in overtime and the back end of February, uh, when they lost 4-3 to three to the Hurricanes in overtime. So if they can play and battle them like they did in that game, which was honestly surprising how they were able to keep up with the pace and speed of the Carolina Hurricanes, if the Flyers can do that in this game, that is the number one key to being able to even get one point out of it, get into overtime, and feel really good about yourselves coming out of this game. Because there's that first line is arguably, if not the best, one of the best first lines in all of hockey with Aho, Tiravine, and Svechnikov. Then their second line um, is is very good as well with Martinuk, who brings um, the punch. You have Trocek, you have Nakis, Niederreier, Stahl, Fass, Lorenz, Kakaniemi, and Jarvis is one of the most talented fourth lines. So... This team through and through is very well put together. They don't even have Anthony D'Angelo, and they're still getting it done from the back end because they have Jalen Shatfield, who's been always very good um, in the minor leagues and now gets a chance to prove it at the NHL, and that's what he's been doing. And they have Ian Cole, um, who has done very good for them. So for our Philadelphia Flyers, the only way I really see them being able to somehow squeak out a win against the Hurricanes again, I said it when it came to the Panthers game, and it was nothing against Carter Hart. He actually played fine. It's just he got hung out to dry. It wasn't a good game defensively by the Philadelphia Flyers uh, whatsoever. But this game, they're going to have to at least try to keep the, the Hurricanes to the outside a lot more than they did against the Panthers. And Carter Hart's really going to have to be the key to the game because on top of them having to surprisingly keep up with the pace and speed of the Hurricanes like they did to battle into the overtime game the last time they played the Hurricanes, they're also going to need a huge game from Carter Hart because I don't see with the way they defended Vegas and the way that they defended Florida, the Flyers all of a sudden being this great tight jam at the neutral zone defensive team that really takes the puck from the Carolina Hurricanes, similar to how the Phantoms actually, our AHL affiliate, were able to really jam the zone uh, last evening when they played their opponent in the Laval Rock at the Montreal Canadiens minor league team, they were able to kind of keep uh, getting pucks off of the other team's stick and then just kind of go when they won 4-3. to three. If the Flyers can do something like that, cut off the passing lane, get 
and kind of draw turnovers, that will go a big way as well as jamming the neutral zones, surprisingly, again, trying to keep up with the speed and pace of the Hurricane. But again, the biggest key in conclusion is Carter Hart, or if Martin Jones is in net, Martin Jones, but I would have to think Carter Hart is going to be in net. Uh, where when it comes to our Flyers, they're going to continue to do Giroux. Well, Giroux, it's actually going to be Giroux, Frost, Konechny. Um, then you have Farabee, Broussard, Atkinson, since uh, Scotty Lawton did get banged up last game. So they're going to give Frost, which I like that, giving him the opportunity in offensive spots in the first line. I actually really like that if that becomes the case. Lindblom, Hayes, Van Riemsdyk, Mayhew, Brown, McEwen, and then Proveroff, Braun, Sanheim, Risto, Yondo and York, and then Carter Hart, it does have slotted as a starter. Yondo, York, again, is not the best strategic line, but my buddy on PlayStation, when I was talking to him, did bring up a good point. It's probably so York can just be a sponge on the bench, and Yandel's essentially a player coach telling Cam York the ins and outs of how to be a successful offensive defenseman, because that's probably what Keith Yandel's going to be when he retires, if he wants to be a, def a, um, a coach that kind of helps guys in terms of the, the offensive defenseman in the league to be able to develop into the step up on the play guys that he was. He's never going to teach anybody how to be a defensively sound player, but he can definitely teach somebody like Cam York how to be a guy that jumps up on the play. But everybody have a great time playing day. This has been the latest edition of the Grittiest Take, previewing our Philadelphia Flyers against the Carolina Hurricanes at 3 p.m. today. Peace out, everybody, and have a good day.